Howdy folks, I'm Sparkling Snowdrop, swiftly snowboarding over snowy slopes. I'm Amber. And Amber, let me know, how does a flower snowboard down slippery slopes? Well, I, if the flower is in like the little flower pot that's hooked to a snowboard and, you know, it's a nice temperature controlled flower pot so the flower doesn't get too cold and... Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah, I get it. I get it. Uh, it makes no sense. Hang 10 dudes. Let's get started. All right, folks. And our first letter is titled, Am I a jerk for tricking my wife's ex-husband into showing that he's a liar? This one is a doozy. My wife's extended family and her ex and their extended family are all deeply religious people. I believe that they are more concerned with appearing to do the right thing than actually doing it. But that is a whole different story. My wife is in a nasty custody battle. It's nasty in litigation, but my wife and her family are adamant about being the better party and being the bigger person. Well, her ex hit her with the latest low blow. During a discovery, he sent his income, and his income said that he went from making $80,000 a year to making $35,000 a year at the business that he owns. Because of this, my wife actually needs to start paying him child support because of the new disparity in income. Well, in this deposition, my wife's lawyer asked him, do you ever take jobs for cash? And he replied, no. She said, you never take cash. He said, maybe for a small $100 job, nothing sizable. I said, okay, let's see. I did not tell my wife about what I was planning to tell you. And this is so that she would have plausible and honest deniability. Let's say that this man is a carpenter. I called a PI and I asked if they wanted some cabinets redone. And they said sure, and I explained what I needed. Three weeks later, I have a video of the ex counting out $1,800 in $100 bills and a text message of him saying, cash is fine, no issue. The PI even got it in writing that he paid cash and made sure that there was a mention of no receipt on video. I provided the video to my wife so that she could give it to the attorney. Her mom and sister found out and they basically went off the deep end. They asked, who do you think you are? You think that this is your case? You're going to make your wife look like an evil or petty person. My wife seems unmoved by all this, even though the attorney said this basically destroys his credibility as a witness. At a minimum, this could be perjury if he doesn't change his answer at trial and this is financial dishonesty at the best. This will help your case. But I feel as though I've helped my wife's case and made an enemy of her immediate family and my wife seems not displeased, but I think she thinks that I'm doing too much. I am simply trying to help her. All right, folks, what do you think? Not the jerk. I mean, were the wife's like mom and sister going to step up and pay this child support or were OP and his wife going to be on the hook? Yeah. Like you and your wife are a married couple and your financial situations affect each other. If he's going to be a slime and try and weasel money out of her, like that's your business as much as it is your wife's, you know, assuming you work together as a household and aren't entirely separate and everything. Yeah, but even if they are entirely separate, it's still going to impact the distribution of money that she has. So yeah. it will still indirectly impact him. I don't think that OP is wrong here. I think that him and his wife are a team and maybe what he did here was a slight overreach because maybe it should have come from the wife's side or the attorney's side. But I don't think that they did the wrong thing. Well, I think, oh, sorry. No, go ahead. I think that they did the I think that they did a great job at showing that he's not a credible individual and that he's literally trying to get the wife to pay child support even though he doesn't need it. Well, and you know, if we take his post literally, it sounds like he handed it to his wife and his wife still had to turn it over to her lawyer. Yeah. So, I mean, she may be struggling with this to some degree because it's not what her mom and sister want her to do, but like it seems like she's at least somewhat on board if she's willing to use it. She yeah, could always yeah. have it thrown out if she was really opposed to it. I mean, I guess that's a very fair point. Like it was her decision at the end to give this to the attorney. OP just simply set up the situation. The guy has no credibility and he's just just trying to put uh, OP's wife on the line for child support. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And Slayer of Drums says, not a jerk, being the bigger person, 
sometimes means that you will get messed over. You basically protected your wife and your combined income against a liar who is using her ethics against her. I hope this doesn't cause any problems in the family, but good on you. And OP replies, I agree, I have learned that a custody battle is often about who is willing to throw more dirt. I don't think that this is throwing dirt because he is intentionally disguising his income to benefit himself, and that doesn't sit well with me. Nor does it sit well with the IRS, I'm sure. Mm -hmm. The IRS, I'm sure, would be very interested to know about this tax fraud that he's committing. And I think if OP ever wanted to, they could probably report him to the IRS and actually get a bounty because I believe if you report people to the IRS that you know are committing tax fraud, there's like some bounty that you can get. What what better way to uh, make this situation even worse for him? That would be petty, but maybe justified. And Smog the Hedgehog says, I mean, couldn't you also report this to the IRS? Because I'm pretty sure if he's willing to lie to the courts to get money from your wife and child support, then he's probably not paying taxes on the money that he makes in cash. And the IRS wants every single penny that they feel they are owed. And OP replies, several people have recommended this. Should I wait until the custody issue is over or do it now? What do you think, Amber? Wait until the custody battle is over or do it now. Run everything by your lawyers. <laughs> Run everything by your lawyers. Yes, Amber and I are not lawyers, nor can we offer any legal <laughs> advice. But I mean, I think that that is good advice. Run it by your lawyer. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for refusing to attend my sister's wedding after she secretly dated and got engaged to my ex-fiance? All right, Reddit, buckle up because this is a roller coaster. I'm a 28-year-old female, and I was engaged to my ex-fiance, Mike, a 30-year-old male, for two years. We were together for five years in total, and we were supposed to get married last summer. About three months before our wedding, I found out that he had been cheating on me with someone else. It was devastating, and I called off the wedding immediately. Mike moved away shortly after we broke up, and I thought that was the end of it. I was heartbroken, but I slowly started to move on with my life. Fast forward to last month, I get a call from my younger sister, Lily, a 25-year-old female, saying that she has exciting news and wants me to come over to her parents' house for dinner to share it. When I arrived, Lily and my parents were all smiles, and she dropped the bombshell. She is engaged to Mike. My head was spinning. I felt like I was going to pass out. Lily and Mike had been secretly dating for the past year, and they are now engaged. My parents had known about it for months, but they decided to keep it from me to protect my feelings. They actually thought that I would be happy for them eventually. Lily tried to justify it by saying that she and Mike fell in love after our breakup and that their relationship is meant to be. She insisted that they didn't start dating until after we were officially over, but I feel betrayed on so many levels. I told them that I wanted nothing to do with the wedding and I stormed out. Since then, my parents and Lily have been bombarding me with calls and texts, calling me selfish and saying that I'm overreacting. They claim that true love is rare and that I should be supportive of Lily's happiness. Now the wedding is in a few months and the pressure is on. My parents have even threatened to cut me off financially if I don't attend. Some friends think that I should go to keep the peace and show that I'm over it, while others are appalled and say that I have every right to be angry and to stay away. To add insult to injury, Lily recently asked if I would be her maid of honor, claiming that she wants to mend the relationship. This request has left me torn. I don't want to ruin our family dynamic further, but I can't shake the hurt and betrayal that I feel. So, am I the jerk for refusing to attend my sister's wedding after she secretly dated and got engaged to my ex-fiance? All right, folks, what do you think? Not the jerk. I mean, this is just not okay. Um, and it's one thing, like, if she wants, she can date whoever she wants, but she can't expect everyone to be happy about it and go along with it. Yeah. This man is someone who deeply hurt OP. I mean, the sad thing is he's probably now going to deeply hurt two members of the family, and then she's going to try to come crying to OP when he does the same thing to her that he did to OP. Yeah, I think that OP has every right to feel hurt. And I think that Lily has every right to marry Mike if she wants to. But... Lily cannot expect OP to be fine with this or even want to be around them. Mike is an individual who hurt her, betrayed her, and now she needs to move on and not be around this person to continue be having a happy life. And that's impeding 
her happiness. Well, and to top it off, there's always going to be that question. If he ever met Lily during the course of the relationship, Ophie's going to wonder, when did this start happening? When mm -hmm. did they start having feelings for each other? Because yeah. this is as much as a sister is like, oh, yeah, it was totally afterward. I mean, no one's, no one's buying that, you know? I mean, I don't necessarily not buy it. I but... mean, I'm not saying they did anything, but if those feelings started to develop at some point, like... It sounds like he moved away afterward and they rekindled somehow. So unless she was living in the same area as him. I got that impression that they were probably in the same locale or something like that. But I don't know. And I mean, I think that those would be interesting details to know. But if she did cheat, then I mean, I can not blame OP at all for wanting nothing to do with her sister and Mike. But if this was more or less they got together after the relationship ended then I still can't blame OP for not wanting to have anything to do with them. Well, all I'm saying is, like, whether or not there was cheating going on, because he cheated and that's how their relationship ended, there's always going to be that question at yeah. the back of her mind. Oh, yeah, and I think that's fair for her to have that question. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck. And no construction 1096 says, not the jerk. Let's review here. Mike has cheated on you and broke your heart, presumably with someone else, since Lily says they only started dating after you broke up. Now that very cheater is with your sister and they, including your parents, hid this fact from you. Now they drop this bomb on you, call you heartless for not believing in their true love, and Lily even dares you, dares to ask you to be their maid of honor. Mike cheated once, he will cheat again, that much I foresee. To be honest, OP, I would go low contact or no contact with them, depending on how they decide to behave in future towards you. All right, folks, and our next letter is titled, Am I a jerk for deleting my girlfriend's Neopet account? I am a 30-year-old male, and I've been dating my girlfriend, a 29-year-old female, for two years. She isn't much of a gamer, but she enjoys this website called Neopets. Apparently, she has been playing it since she was a kid. She puts real money into this game to dress up her animals. There's like a premium membership, etc. She talks about this game constantly. I honestly get annoyed with how often she talks about it. She plays daily for the prizes, and overall she spent a pretty penny for things in this game. I don't get it. It's formatted for kids. Why is an adult playing a game targeted for kids? She won't play any games with me since I do a lot of shooters and survival games, and she doesn't like those. What I don't like, especially, is that she talks to people on Neopets and talks about these friends that she's made on there, but apparently isn't allowed to add them on social media or talk about social media because it's a kid's game. It makes me feel suspicious because who are these people and why is she talking to them? On top of that, she just recently spent money on these trading cards and renewed her yearly subscription, and I can't see how she justifies spending that money on this game. I just really hate that she spent over hundreds of dollars in this game and she always talks about how she got this item and that pet and how many coins she earned on a game inside of this game. I told her that she needs to take a break from it and stop obsessing over Neopets and that it's been getting on my nerves. She said to me that it's one of her childhood memories and it brings her nostalgia and that she enjoys her pets and her friends that she's made on there and that she doesn't plan on stopping anytime soon. While she was at work yesterday, I logged into her computer and her account was signed in. I googled how to delete a Neopets account and I deleted her account. She doesn't need to be playing a kid's game for almost 30... She doesn't need to be playing a kid's game at almost 30 and spending money on it when it has no benefit other than making pets look cool, I guess. She must have gotten an email or something on her phone because about an hour later she called me crying because her account was frozen. I told her that I deleted it and to grow up. She hung up and I haven't seen her since yesterday. She hasn't responded to my calls or texts, but one of our mutual friends messaged me today telling me that I'm a jerk for what I did and that she was extremely hurt. I don't think that I'm a jerk. It's a stupid game and if she wants to play games, she should play a real game on a console or on Steam like I do. All right, folks, what do you think? Major jerk here. This was something that brought her joy and... One thing I really hate is this game snobbery that mm -hmm. you have to be a, you know, console gamer or a PC gamer for gaming to be valid. Yeah. Women are actually play mobile games at much higher rates than men uh, on average, they've found. And but yet we continue to like denigrate that as not real gaming, you know. And I just feel like that this whole thing feeds into it. Like first person shooters. Oh, wow, that's a real game. But 
if you dress up animals, that's not a real game. Well, and even in these first-person shooters, there's a lot of opportunities to buy things like outfits mm -hmm. and to buy special uh, weapons and stuff like that. I don't know all of it. I'm not involved in that community, but I do know that there's ways to buy frivolous things that don't add to your gameplay other than like being decorative right well and how is playing a first person shooter benefiting society any more yeah. than dressing up pets you well know? and that's it is it doesn't right playing video games generally doesn't further society in the respect that sure like the technologies generated from building video games sometimes do further uh, create further advancements but the people who are playing video games generally aren't doing this to further advance society. But you can make the argument that, you know, people who play these games, they are productive members of society and they're benefiting from the quality time that they spend on these games. And through that, they do help society, right? Right. I feel like that's like, a, you know, an argument that could be made for both types of video games. Oh, I mean, any kind of video game, yeah. any type of entertainment, any type of art, right? Uh, although in some cases, like with some of these games, they also breed very toxic environments that if they spill over into real life can be very hurtful. Yeah. Um, so I just do not like this snob right here. But regardless of that, this was something that she valued. And you had no right to destroy it. Like, just no. because it's not physical in the way that, you know, a book or something is. Like, if you'd taken her book and, like, burned it or thrown it in the trash, that would be long wrong. It's destruction of property. Mm -hmm. This is the same thing. And this is something she's been building up since she was a child. Yeah. It's a really terrible attitude. And I think that OP has a lot of growing up to do here. I don't think that OP uh, is ready for a relationship if no. they... If they feel like the right thing to do in a relationship is to destroy someone else's property, I think that OP needs to go and seek therapy, talk to a counselor, try to understand why they have these feelings. They should also apologize to their ex here. They're not your girlfriend, as, as uh, I think that you are deeply misinformed if you think that they are. And I think that you probably need to spend some time to think about what you've done here and how you've hurt a person you supposedly love. Because this isn't a loving action. This is a action of uh, just it's controlling control, and manipulative. Right? Now, I do want to talk about like the friends aspect, mm -hmm. right? Because she talks about friends that she can't actually friend on Facebook or whatnot, right? I think that if this is this is a kind of a tricky situation if she's interacting with minors there isn't necessarily anything there isn't necessarily a problem with that as long as the interactions are age appropriate interactions well i think what he's saying with that is like you're not actually allowed in the game chats to even mention social media because see, there I are see. children in it yeah well, and that's done to protect the children mm -hmm. that are in social media, right? And on social media. And when you have games that are centered towards children, you need to make sure that there are the people who aren't going to be able to message them, harass them, look them up, and these kinds of things, or even take advantage of them, right? Right. Like, as I play Pokemon Go, and that doesn't even have an in-game chat feature because it's for all ages and it's hard to monitor. Yeah. And so you have to kind of make external chats if you want to talk to people. Yeah. So, you know, in that respect, if this is a protection thing for where the they're just making sure that the individuals that they talk to can't actually reach out and, you know, find people's profiles and stuff like that, I don't necessarily have a problem with that. If there are actual like concerning things you see about her behavior and the media that she's consuming and you see messages and stuff like that that make you concerned about how she's talking to people who may be underage at that point in time i think that that is worth investigating and actually going into and saying well this is actually not a good thing but it doesn't sound like she's using this as a platform for grooming children or anything like no. that. No, and I mean, I feel like there are two, I mean, I don't know the demographics specifically, but I feel like, you know, you do have a lot of young children who you have are using it, but you also have a lot of young millennials who are, you know, getting back into it or continuing their accounts from childhood. Mm -hmm. But let me know what you folks think. So anyhow, take care and good luck to OP's X. Yes. All right, folks, it is tea time. Grab your beverages of choice. I've got some tea right here and Amber, she has a joke. A prediction, our last mm. prediction. Finally, folks, we're finally out of the prediction section and we're going on to another maddening section.
You'll get mosquito bites only in places where it's impossible to scratch. That is that is a prediction, and it probably is true. Probably true. And I have licorice spice. Alright, folks, that's all the time we have for today. Thank you so much for watching. Happy, wonderful Wednesday, folks. I hope your Wednesday is off to a wonderful start. Amber, we need some kind of moral advice and or guidance. And please, have it in the form of a business card for a private eye. You shouldn't commit financial fraud, but if you didn't, would be out of business. <laughs> not really a moral, it's just kind of like... <laughs> I guess that is not really a moral. Thanks so much for watching, and we'll see you all tomorrow. Bye! Howdy, folks. I'm smark... Smarkling. <laughs> I, I'm, that's the new word. That's what my vampires do in my vampire lore. They smarkle. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, I'm worried.